Hi ho, Arkansas Pilgrim here again. In the kitchen again today, which is a better place to be than, than my garden out there, because uh, I don't know if you've watched some of my recent gardening videos, especially on Shed Wars. Um, well, um, well, that's why I'm in the kitchen. Forget about the garden. Forget I ever mentioned it. We're going to be doing one of my favorite subjects today, fermentation. And it's also a favorite subject of Peggy and Andy Page. Go check out Peggy and Andy Page Homestead. Uh, they actually really need your help. If you go out and check them out, you'll find out why. But go there, watch their videos, like, comment, subscribe, and watch the ads and click on ads because it helps them out because they need your help. They're great people, and they, they're a hoot to watch. And one of the things they do is fermentation. And today, it's simple fermentation, real low level, but we're going to be making homemade ginger ale, which is way different than the ginger ale you get in a can or a bottle at the store. One of the things that's really different about it is it actually tastes like ginger. So, let's get started. All right, here's my ginger, and I'm going to give you a heads up, and I guess you probably already got the heads up from the title of the video, but I'm also going to include how to adjust your recipe for a different size, which is using math, okay? And math is not that hard, okay? Before I go off on a rant, you made the agreement that math is hard because you got taught math by non-math people back in school, okay? Whether they were education majors or English majors, not bashing them at all, but math, especially on the level we're going to be doing it, is not really that hard. It's a little different, but hey, almost everything's a little different. So don't be scared by having to multiply two numbers together because that's all it is. Well, you got to divide a number and then multiply. Two steps. Jeez, you can handle two steps. You're smart people. It's okay. Now, back to the subject at hand. Here's the ginger. My original recipe is calling out for uh, an one and a half ounces of ginger. And this recipe basically makes two quarts. And I've got a jar. Here it is. This is one of these big pickle jars. I'm trying to get it in. It's just a little bit bigger than two quarts. It's actually only one cup larger. So I could really just go ahead and make two quarts and leave extra head space in the jar. But I wanted to include this in the video and make things worse on myself through explanation, editing, and everything else. So, hey, and I'm doing this for you, so you better appreciate it. Anyway, one and a half ounces of ginger. I need a little bit more than that, and my scale here is reading this ginger root that I got as almost 11 ounces. So I got a, I'm gonna grab this piece, stick it there, Okay, this is reading one and three quarters ounces, which is probably exactly what I'm going to need. I do have to skin it, but uh, once I do my conversion, my I need a little bit less than one and three quarter ounces. Hopefully, that'll be enough. Otherwise, uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit stronger, which, hey, nothing wrong with that. Let's go ahead and use these two pieces. So, that's enough ginger. All right, I'll go ahead and show every step. Here's, you know, peeler. Let's get rid of the skin. And me being the cheapskate I am, I don't want to, I want to get rid of the skin and not too much of the ginger. And I'm not sure what leaving the skin in it would do to the flavor. Then again, you never know. So we'll, oh wow, man. I'm already smelling the ginger just from 
taking the skin off. Jeez. And I'll give you a heads up, you got to ferment this for two days. So I'm going to be waiting with lively anticipation for this to be finished once it all happens, once it all is said and done. So we'll do this and watch your fingers because getting blood into it might affect the flavor. I mean, don't worry about getting hurt. I mean, your body will heal itself. I mean, that's how God made it. He didn't accidentally become the most complicated system one could ever conceive. Um, but, there we go. Jeez. Yeah, of course, you don't want to be careless and cut the end of your finger off. So, there we go. I'm going to get the rest of it, but maybe a little pair of knife to get the uh, little indentations and stuff. Because like I said, I don't want to lose any of that precious ginger. Okay, here's the ginger all cleaned up, ready to be grated. And I went ahead and kind of scooped up all the peelings. Because, I mean, they smell so good. Yeah. Probably going to, I don't know, put them in a little pan of boiling water or something. Just to make the kitchen smell even stronger of ginger. Uh... You can feed them your chickens. You can throw them away. And they're gonna, these are going to end up with the chickens anyway. But uh, it's just one of those things that's kind of the bonus of doing stuff yourself and being able to, I don't know, enjoy, well, enjoy the smell of these things. So, anyway, let's go ahead and, well, I'll just pull out the grater right now. Uh, okay, here's the grater I've got. It says finely grated, but this is the finest grater I have, which is not fine at all. But let's go ahead and weigh what I've got here to see uh, how much I actually have. Um, which is probably out of this shot here. But what the heck. Okay, this is too... Well, I'm going to use this all. It'll just make it stronger even though it's more than what I need because, well, I've already peeled it. So what the heck else am I going to do? So let's go ahead and just grate it. Hey, it's coming out pretty fine anyway because I think uh, the ginger's kind of stringy, so it doesn't really grate really big anyway. I mean, you can even see the stuff that's coming up there. All that's going to be useful because, well, you'll see as the as we go along here with the recipe. And once again, watch your fingers, because you don't want to contaminate your ginger ale with blood. Oops. Hey, here's the part you've all been dreading, uh, dealing with math and numbers. But like I said, hey, it's not all that big a deal. Pretty straightforward. If you're doubling a recipe, you multiply everything by two, right? If you're having a recipe, you divide everything by two, okay? Well, all this is doing is showing you how to do something that's where the number's different than doubling or having it, where it's an oddball number. But to start off with, uh, I'm going to show you something that's really handy, which you might want to do a screen grab and print out. Maybe some of you already have this, but it's uh, handy conversions of the oddball English measuring system where if you're using metric this is really easy and not an issue at all but also um, fractional decimals which is because if you're doing an oddball calculation you're going to end up with kind of oddball decimals and this will give you a quick way to get an idea of what the number is and then go from there well my ginger ale recipe that I'm working on. Well, it basically makes two quarts. Okay? You got, and if you go back to this, well, four cups is a quart, well, two quarts is eight cups. Well, we got seven and a half cups of water plus all this stuff. All adds up to ends up being ends up being 
eight cups, two quarts. Well, as uh, you saw on my jar, it actually holds nine cups. Well, which is not that big a deal. You look at these numbers, you just throw a little bit extra in and you're fine. But just for the sake of being an engineer and making things overly complicated, which is what we love to do, um, I figured I'd go through this exercise. But like I said, if it's something else where you know, it's a significant difference from what you're doing, but it's also not a nice even number, this is how you do it. Well, you take, in this case, you know, this recipe makes eight quart or eight cups. Well, and my jar is nine cups. Well, that's nine divided by eight gives you a one point one two five. Well, and that's a clue for you, work with numbers. If you're making the, if your final recipe is larger than your original, your number needs to be bigger than one. You know, if you get a number that's smaller than one, you divide it the wrong way around. You don't divide eight by nine, you divide nine by eight. If you're making it smaller, then the number needs to be less than one. Pretty straightforward, okay? Well, 1.125, if we look, go back here, 0.125 is 1 eighth, and that makes sense. You know, we had, you know, eight cups, now we got one more cup, so it's one eighth bigger. So, go through and multiply all these numbers by 1.125. And, like I said, in this instance, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but let's just do one example. We've got two tablespoons times 1.125 equals two and a quarter tablespoons. What's a quarter tablespoon? Hey, go back to that handy-dandy list. Uh, a quarter of a tablespoon is three quarters of a teaspoon. So, or you just do two heaping tablespoons and see think that adds up to enough, hey, there you go. But hey, what fun is that, you know? Actually, it's probably a lot of fun instead of spending all your time working with a calculator and dealing with numbers that are don't make all that much of a difference. But what the heck, I'm an engineer, I like numbers, so. Anyway, it, rather than putz around with this anymore, and there's probably a lot of you have already skipped back to the, you know, part where you can see the video, and are dealing with the ginger ale. So let's get back to the ginger ale and join all those people that have skipped over this. All right, after all that, here we are with the actual amounts. The, uh, as you know, I kept showing in the calculations before, uh, I started off with three quarters and I end up with something between three quarters and seven eighths of a cup. Well, three quarters of a cup, here's an eighth of a cup, Let's give, you know, somewhere you know, between half. It's part way in between. It's not critical. It's not like we're splitting atoms or making nuclear weapons here or anything. <clears throat> so, there we go. That's that amount. Um, my, I ended up with, uh, like, a, works out to about eight and a half cups of water. And it's, the recipe says you use half a cup of water to mix the sugar with. Well, this is also not critical because it's all gonna be combined later. So I wanted to use a little bit more than a half since I've got more than three quarters of a cup. So here's the half cup of water. And it is very important that you use filtered water or specifically non-chlorinated water, water straight out of the tap. Chlorine's in the water to kill things that might make you sick. They also kill things like yeast and other stuff that we're actually trying to make use of here. So you need clean water that is not chlorinated so it won't actually interfere with what we're trying to do here, which is ferment, which is using yeast and beneficial bacteria. So there we go. We've got water, we've got sugar. Now we're gonna heat this up to make that sugar dissolve. That's a lot of sugar in that water. All right, we're, the sugar's dissolving, and I'm going to go ahead and add the ginger. You can add the ginger at the same time as you add the sugar. It doesn't matter. That This is just what I'm doing. But it's all going to, it's all going to need to be together so that it can steep and extract that ginger out of that. 
any ginger flavor. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that back on the stove. All right, here we have the sugar and ginger and water boiling. That's going to help extract the, uh, the all that yummy ginger flavor. But uh, And what I said before about the chlorinated water, you know, killing yeast and, and bacteria. Yep, that's true. But bacteria not an issue here because we're obviously killing bacteria from uh, you know, by boiling the water. This is not lacto-fermentation. This is yeast fermentation. But still, you don't want to have chlorinated water. And now we need to let this cool. Otherwise, when we add the yeast, it'll kill the yeast and we won't get fermentation. So what we need to do, and I have a feeling this spoon is kind of hot, and yes, it it is. You need to cover it up, keep flies and other vermin out of it, and let it cool until it reaches room temperature. That'll not only allow the ginger to steep, but it'll also prevent you know killing of the yeast when we add uh, in the next step. Okay, while the ginger steeping, I've gone ahead and measured out the uh, the rest of the water, like we talked about in the calculations section here earlier. Um, this is the balance of the water. Uh, we we ended up with a nice, uh, fairly round number of two and a quarter tablespoons of lemon juice. So just going to go ahead and add two or one, two, two, and a quarter. Oh, wait, that's a quarter teaspoon. Let me grab There we go. Now, didn't really talk about it before, but uh, a teaspoon, there's three teaspoons to a tablespoon. So a teaspoon is one third of a tablespoon. So I'm going to put almost a teaspoon. And like I said before, you know, we're not, you know, this isn't rocket science. So a little bit different isn't going to make that much difference. And yeast. We ended up with, you know, the original recipe had an eighth of a teaspoon. Now we ended up with a little more than an eighth. But I mean, some of you may not even have eighth of a teaspoon. You know, actually, you should. Especially, but okay, gotta get it out of here. There, that's how about a heaping eighth of a teaspoon? That's about as much as I can get. There we go. All right, now that's going to be ready for the syrup once it cools off to room temperature, and then we'll be well, hey, we'll be we'll be getting we'll be going on our fermenting real ginger ale. Man, I can't wait for this to be ready. All right, the ginger has steeped. It's cooled off. And the recipe I found said to run it through a strainer and get all the juice out you can. But that sounds silly to me because I want that ginger to keep steeping. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the whole thing in and we can always strain it when everything's said and done. So. Mixing it into the water and sugar, or the water and yeast and lemon juice. And there's actually a little bit less water than uh, I was expecting for how much I multiplied the recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and top it off with a little bit, go ahead and get the, the full amount that I was expecting. Now, just going to let it, uh, after I do that, put the cap on loosely. Set it in a cool, dark place, cover it up, allow it to ferment for like two days, and then you'll have real ginger ale. I'll check back with you on how it tastes when it's all done. God bless you all. See you next time.